بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصدر now we're going to look at a linguistic analysis of the word asr itself. The word asr comes from a verb, literally means he pressed it, he squeezed it, he drenched it. You know when you squeeze a fruit and you get juice out of it, Arabic word for juice is asir, to squeeze something. This is the first meaning. Then in the Quran we find, وَفِيهِ يَعْصِرُونَ This is the interpretation of the dream by Yusuf a.s. And they also, they, they will squeeze juice, you know how they, in the ancient times they used to press grapes, uh, stomp on grapes to make wine, or olives and other things like that. That's the word being used for squishing them, to, to actually bring the wine out of them or the juices out of them. Then the asr is, uh, this is something we mentioned before, but I'll tell you where it comes from now. Ash-shihab says, it's, asr is a period of time in, during which someone you know passes away. And is also a period of time that you know in history where a nation became extinct or a nation came to its end, which is tied to what we were saying in the beginning. A state of emergency, and also the tragedy of human history. That's the two themes that are connected in the meaning of uh, Asr. Then finally, a couple more. I didn't do it at the time I was supposed to do it. So Asr is used as a time you are supposed to do something. By understanding that implication of Asr, what we're learning in Wal Asr in Al-Insan al Khusr is, human beings are in loss, and the time to change the way they are supposed to do it is right now. This is the time to change immediately. Let's get to Inna Al-Insan al Khusr. First of all, the word Inna. Inna is used in the Arabic language, uh, not just to mean certainly, but to talk to a group of people that are in doubt about what you are saying. By using the word Inna in Inna Al-Insan al Khusr, we are already learning that most human beings, when they hear this, guess what? They don't believe it. Now let's talk about the word insan quickly. In, the word insan comes from different roots, it's argued. One of them is nisyan, forgetfulness. And part of that is the human being can be reminded that he's in really, really deep trouble, but what happens soon after? He forgets. So the word insan, as opposed to al-fard, the individual, al-nafs, the person. There are different words that are alternatives. Al-bashar, the, the you know, people, al-nas. But al-insan here, two benefits of it. One, to allude to our forgetfulness. And two, the word insan is individual, it's called ism lil-jins. The benefit of knowing that is, this word includes two things. It includes all categories, meaning all human beings, and at the same time it's singular. Now we're dealing with the part lafi khusr, lafi khusr. So this statement, grammatically speaking, is the strongest it could possibly be. First of all, there are two kinds of sentences in Arabic, jumla fi'liya and ismiya. This is ismiya. This is the first thing that makes it stronger. The second is, instead of saying al-insanu fi khusr, it's inna al-insan. This is harf at this is a harf, this is a preposition used only for the purpose of strengthening what you're about to say. So there's a second reason that it's stronger. The third reason that it's stronger is the word al-insan has al on it, which is lil-jins. It's every single human being adding another degree of emphasis. Then on top of that you have lafi, it's not just fi khusr, it is lafi khusr. This lam, typically you have the word we, the other word fi rather. لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ fi أَحْسَنِ تَقْوِيمِ There's just fi. But this is lafi. Lam here is very difficult to translate, but it basically has the same function rhetorically as inna. Certainly, certainly. Another tool of empowerment. Then you have, it's not inna al-insana la khasir. The human being is a loser. Lafi khusr. He is in loss. You know, someone being a loser is one thing. And by the way, ism fa'il in Arabic implies something that's happening right now. 
But by using the preposition, it becomes a constant state. He is immersed in it, he's been in it, he's gonna stay in it kind of thing. It's a scenario that's being depicted. So the word fee here adds to that. So one after another, after another, after another mechanism by which this statement has been emphasized. And above and beyond all of that, Allah began with wal asr by taking an oath. Now we get to the last ayah, inshaAllah ta'ala, of this surah. إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ وَتَوَاصَوْا بِالْحَقِّ وَتَوَاصَوْا بِالصَّبْرِ The first comment we will make was, is that when Allah mentioned the loss of the human being, the singular was used. Al-insan, even though it refers to all human beings, the singular was used. But when it came to the exception, He used the plural. He used the plural. So we have to understand this transition from the singular to the plural. What we learn here is, these few people, the only way they will survive is if they stick together. They cannot be apart. They have to remain connected to this ummah. The unity of this ummah and the believers sticking together is embedded in this ayah as part of our survival because of the use of the plural. So the word amul is beautiful here that Allah Azza wa Jal tied the exception to a collective affair. So that's one of the things about the transition from singular to plural. The other thing we should talk about here is إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Allah Azza wa Jal in this ayah didn't mention any qualifications of Iman. Basically, the fruit of Iman essentially is tranquility, at the heart of it. The fruit of Iman is tranquility. Remember we said human beings are in loss? What are the losses of the human being? Loss of health, loss of wealth, loss of loved one, right? These are the kinds of losses human beings suffer in this world. But if you have Iman, then you know that this world is not permanent. This world is temporary, and what Allah has in the Akhirah compared to this world is nothing. Then Allah Azza wa Jal mentions وَعَمِلُ الصَّالِحَاتِ First, in, uh, عمل, the word amal in Arabic is similar to another word called fi'il. There's amal and there is fi'il. Amal is a conscious action. While fi'il is a sub, it can also be a subconscious action. For example, fi'il is I'm breathing right now. That's not an amal, that is what? It's a fi'il. I'm walking. That can be a fi'il because I'm not necessarily thinking about every step. But when you speak to someone, when you speak to, when you go to work, when you drive your car, right? So f- here Allah Azza wa Jal is making us, one thing we're realizing is, we are answerable for every single act that we did consciously. And then the, the word after it, amilu as-salihat. The word as-salihat is actually an adjective. It comes from the word salaha, which means to reconcile and to rectify. They do goods, literally, if you want to rough translate it, goods. But good in and of itself in English, that doesn't even sound right. Good is an adjective, but an adjective requires a noun. Good deeds. Well, the good is here in the word salih. Where's the word deeds? It's not there in the Arabic. That word would have been, وَعَمِلُوا الْأَعْمَالَ الصَّالِحَاتِ Now the thing that I want to highlight here are a couple of things. The first thing is the word al-a'mal in Arabic is considered, it's a broken plural. And broken plurals are supposed to have feminine adjectives. So typically you would say Al-A'mala As-Salihata. You would put a tamarbuta on As-Saliha. And that would be done. Righteous deeds. But Allah Azza wa Jal says Al-A'mala and understood. But He says As-Salihati. This is the feminine plural form. So what's the difference between saying As-Salihata, just putting a tamarbuta as we would expect? And instead of putting the tamar buta, putting the feminine plural form. Well, the difference is from a balagha point of view, if you put the tamar buta, then those are many, many, many deeds. But when you put the feminine plural, this is considered a plural of minimum. Meaning Allah is saying righteous deeds that I'm asking you to do are not countless. They are just a few. I'm not asking a lot of you. And the fact that Allah hasn't asked us for much is inside the word of salihat. Had it been a saliha, there would have been a lot more. إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ And we are left now with the final two items in the final ayah of Surah Al-Asr At-Tawasi bil-Haq and At-Tawasi bil-Sabr These two items First of all, let's understand that from a, a literary point of view Allah Azza wa Jal could have said وَتَوَاصَوْ بِالْحَقِّ وَالصَّبْرِ But Allah Azza wa Jal And it could have been emphasized a degree above that by having said وَتَوَاصَوْ بِالْحَقِّ وَبِالصَّبْرِ that would have been a degree above in emphasis. But then a third degree above that is وَتَوَاصَوْ بِالْحَقِّ وَتَوَاصَوْ بِالصَّبْرِ So this is the most emphatic form of saying this statement. So when we talk about tawasi bilhaq, first of all the linguistic analysis of tawasi, it is to leave a will or a legacy. That's what the word comes from. And when you leave someone a will and a legacy, 
then already you have the utmost sincerity and genuine concern for the one that's going to be left behind. And there's a sense of urgency in the counsel and the advice that you're going to leave with them. But then the phrase bilhaq can be understood in three ways. This, the preposition ba in bilhaq can be understood in three ways. And each of those three ways come together to formulate the full meaning of this expression. First of all, the ba here can be understood as an adverb. It could be an adverbial phrase. What that would mean in English is, they counsel each other truthfully. In other words, not, instead of saying with truth or to truth, I translated it as truthfully. I made it an adverb. In other words, when they do that counsel to one another, they are extremely truthful when they do it. Bilhaq can also be understood if you want to compare it to an English expression. It could be with truth. What this means is when you counsel someone, you counsel them with Qur'an. In other words, when you're giving each other counsel and reminder, you remind them by means of what? An ayah. You remind them by means of the words of the Messenger wasallam. The third meaning is to the truth. So we have truthfully, we have with the truth, and then there is also the final, to the truth. In other words, th- this implies there's a person who is you know, uh, losing zeal and they're losing their energy in doing the work for the sake of Allah. Because when you say to be in the meaning of ilah here, in the meaning of ilah, what that would imply is you're reminding them of the goal for which they're engaged in this struggle. So these are the three benefits of just the ba in watawasaw bil haq. The word al haq is understood also, just the word al haq is understood in three ways. So these were the three benefits of the ba, but now three benefits of just the word al haq. Al-Haq is understood linguistically as something you know to be true for sure, for which you don't have to be told. Something that deep inside your conscience, you just know it's true. So this, this implies when they counsel each other, they counsel each other to something that their conscience already agrees with. This is the first meaning of Al-Haq. The second is that which can be proven true by means of evidence. In other words, you tell them something and they say, I never heard that before. I don't feel that it's true. But sometimes you tell them and they feel that it's true. But sometimes they say, I don't know. I've never heard that before. At that point, what do you have to give them? Evidence. And these things are connected. So what's the ultimate evidence that you provide someone? That something is true or false. It is revelation itself. Right? So that's the second benefit. And the third is very important. The Arabic word haq is used also when you have an obligation. What this means is you counsel each other reminding people of their responsibilities. So much is embedded in these two, these, this, these three word phrase. وَتَوَاصَوْ bil. Haq in these three words. When you do this work, it will require and necessitate patience. So Allah Azza wa Jal concludes the surah by saying, "Wa tawasau bis sabr." Sabr. The word sabr means several things, and in English, it's kind of unfair to translate it as patience. It's it certainly includes patience, but it includes perseverance. Perseverance implies when things become difficult, you still hang on, you still keep going, chugging along. This is persevering. It also implies commitment. In other words, you never get lazy, you never slack off. You remain committed, like you're committed to getting to work on time every day. It also implies constancy. In other words, your commitment doesn't fluctuate, it doesn't go up and down. It's the same. If you can have the same level of obedience to Allah, whether times are easy or they are difficult, then you have exercised the quality of a sabr That's what sabr is. So now, what, but Allah doesn't say, وَتَوَاصَوْ بِالْحَقِّ وَصَبَرُوا This is very important. They encouraged each other and counseled each other to the best of their ability, with sincerity, truthfully, to the truth and to the obligations that they owe. And Allah didn't continue by saying, and they were patient in doing so. He didn't just say they were patient. He went a step further and said, وَتَوَاصَوْ بِالْصَبْرِ Which teaches us something huge. Not only is sabr included now, Meaning they were patient, they were perseverant, they remained constant, but they encouraged each other in remaining patient and constant and persevering. You know what that teaches us? You cannot keep your sabr. You need someone to counsel you and give you strength and say, listen, you need to have sabr. We need, we need to feed, sabr feeds off of each other. The final few things I want to share with you in, in regards to these, the sequence of these four items. Uh, the, the first comment is all of these are mentioned in the past tense. So by mentioning them in the past, it is an illustration that their entire life represents these behaviors until death came to them. These are the people. In other words, you can never just stop. You can never just look. You, you have to reach the point where you can look back or, or people will look back at your entire life and be able to say all these four conditions were met.